And good morning, everyone. It is 7.08 a.m. here on a Friday morning. And as usual, every uh, what, every other Friday or so, we have, uh, well, we always love it when Karen Gibson, Councilwoman Karen Gibson comes, but sometimes it's Jeff Griffith or uh, we've had Councilman Chattis on before. But uh, to bring us up to speed on what happened in last night's city council meeting. Good morning, Karen Gibson. Good morning. So uh, we got so much to talk about and probably not enough time to talk about it. One, but one of the longest council meetings you've ever been a part of? No. No, no, no. no. We've gone <laughs> till 1 and 2 before. Mm-hmm. Well, it says this morning, according to KOYO's story, that Rob Snyder filed at 4, 5, 4.30 this morning. It says Thursday afternoon's work session and council meeting. Council members were in uh, over nine hours worth of meetings. So three hours on Friday's of uh, Friday's council meeting focused on uh, that should be Thursday's council meeting, focused on citizen comments and city council discussions concerning proposed zone changes to Guadalupe neighborhood. Now, this, uh, according to the story, it goes on, and no sense in me reading the story when you're sitting right here, to tell us there were some, a few upset people that spoke about uh, the uh, building of these uh, apartments, or what do we call them? Uh, They're tax credit apartments. And it was a zone change. Guadalupe Villas. Guadalupe Villas, uh-huh. yes. It's, uh, the land will encompass um, 310 Avenue K and 1121 Third Street and the Marsha mm-hmm. Sharp. Mm-hmm. So this is what struck me when I read this is this land, and I think, to quote you, Councilwoman Karen Gibson said the proposal to develop the land has been vacant for 48 years and it will uh, help the city as a whole. Well, I would say... I don't really know exactly where that is, but if that land's been vacant that long, I think it's about time we build something on it. You know, um, this was simply a a zone change. This does not mean that they will be built. In January, we get applications, if you will, for tax credit buildings. These build these developers come in and and they have it's on a point system, and they. They have to either find land to build these, it, and normally they're either apartments or senior living spaces, apartments or duplexes, quadruplexes, whatever they want to build. But this is just a first step that just because we rezoned it does not mean that they're going to get the tax credits. There's one um, one tax credit issued per region. So we've got we've gotten seven. Well, so, so you think if they don't get a tax credit, they won't build the project? I doubt it. Most of them don't. Now I don't I don't know what Mr. Hans's ideal is, but it, this was just a zone change so that he can apply for the tax credits. Got it. He. This is just part of it. This is the first step. Okay. Well, there were some. Uh, the council voted five to one to approve the first reading. So what was the, exactly the, uh, why were some of the citizens upset about the possibility of building these villas there? Well, what was the Guad- complaint? Well, let's just say Guad- Guadalupe is a beautiful neighborhood, it, and they're a very tight-knit neighborhood, and they did not want the apartments. They don't want apartments. So it's all single-family houses? No, no. This is going to be senior. No, senior. I said... Guadalupe, oh, Guadalupe is all? yes, I'm sorry. Yes, Guadalupe is all apparently single, all single homes, single family housing. And they did not want, at, at first this was uh, family housing. And now uh, Mr. Hans has changed it to senior living. Well, the council did vote five to one to approve it, approve it in the first yes. reading. So. Yes. So it's a done deal, as they say. Well, not necessarily. Yeah, I, I mean, but I understand. But usually, the second reading reading will will be the same vote. Now, yeah. she, uh, Sheila Patterson Harris was not there. She's got a new grandbaby, so she is in California. But um, that second vote will include her, and I I don't know what that second vote will be. Um, okay. Well, was there anything? Of course, I, we we want to get into the uh, the uh, L P and L. Uh, situation that's going to take a while because as i say that story has so many moving parts to it Mm -hmm. but is there uh so what else did you guys other than that uh talk about well in executive session as you saw on the on the agenda we did talk about lpnl and i will tell you that is 
still moving forward in a positive manner. That's about all I can tell you at this point, but it is still very positive and still moving forward. So one thing that y'all did do though, is y'all had the first vote also to uh, relinquish the property of the um, auditorium and the Coliseum. Well, we did not vote to relinquish you didn't vote, that. Oh, you voted well, to we, ha- have it put on the ballot. Yes. Okay. Yes, we voted to put it on the ballot to put it to the citizens to abandon. And what that will do is give the council the ability to abandon the building. Now, once once the citizens give us the ability. We don't know when that will happen. We don't know how the the negotiations, but what that will do is give the council the ability to do that. But uh, so well, let's do. Let's take the break early, and a minute early, and then we'll come back and uh, we want to talk uh, more in depth about the uh, the auditorium. Coliseum. Yeah, I want to talk about that because I've got some timelines. Okay. So we will return in just a moment. News Talk, 95.1 FM and 790 AM. This is KFYL Mornings. Dave King, Matt Martin, right here on your radio. And uh, we're talking with Councilwoman Karen Gibson this morning. And we wanted to talk uh, next about the uh, Coliseum and the Auditorium and what is going to be the future of that. Now, set me straight on something because I had always, I had it in my head that Texas Tech owned the land and uh, the city of Lubbock built the facility there. No. The land was transferred to the city of Lubbock in 1953. Okay, and this is this is the land according to a map that Rob showed me. Uh, the city owns the 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 land that the Auditorium Coliseum is sitting on, plus uh, that parking lot that goes all the way up to Jones Stadium. That is correct. That is a, a piece of valuable land. That is, and so that is we had correct. a caller. We had a caller who wanted to know. Well, right. if that's the case. Why do I pay to park? Why do I pay Texas Tech to park on that because land? Because back in, um, and I believe it was back in the fifties, there was an agreement made between the city of Lubbock and Texas Tech that that they have control of that forever, um, as long as as long okay, as so, they're using it. Yes. So in in fact, the city may own it, but. They really don't. I mean, well, Texas, they they own the title to it, but Texas Tech gets to do with it what they want. Yes, and it's kind of a, a shared thing. The city uses it also for the Coliseum and the auditorium. Right. So it's kind of a, a shared agreement, okay. if you will. Well, it seems to me like the city has a very big bargaining tool if they own the land. No. <laughs> now, this is a state thing, so it's not really a bargaining tool. Because it's laid out very much in in the state statute what we will do with it. Okay, then that that clears that up. Then, yeah. so the what's state gonna, tells you what you're going to do with it. What is going to happen? We, we can, can we classify, or would you classify this as I do, as a white elephant? Um, I mean, yeah. did did we not hear? Was it you or one yeah. of the other council people, maybe Jeff Griffiths, that said the city is losing about what seven hundred thousand a year? We are. We're losing about seven hundred thousand a why year. Why do we on still it. have it? Well, that's a great question. We, you we, know, because it's. I mean, just it's been, like hitting yourself in the head with a hammer. It's well, going to feel so good when you quit. In nineteen ninety five, um, there was a public referendum to build a new arena to replace the Coliseum, and that failed. That was in ninety five. Right. And you spent the money, not you, but the council well, at the time spent the money at the city. No, no, no. No, no, no. That was in 95. In 2004, there was a bond election. The bond committee gave um, $5 million for the auditorium. Not the auditorium, the Coliseum. That was for the auditorium. And then a million four for the Civic Center. That was in that 2004 bond election. Mm -hmm. There were no bids done until 2010. Now, why they waited six years, I don't know. But if you've got five million in two thousand and four, and you don't do anything with it for six years, those bids aren't going to come in anywhere near what your bonds for. I mean, that's just not going to happen. So when those bids came in, they were way over the five million. 
that is and and then so nothing no, nothing was accepted none of the proposals were so accepted nothing, the and money nothing wasn't happened spent on the nothing auditorium. happened and then in 2012 the remainder of that 5 million less what it what the proposals took what the um, estimate took went to the audit, went to the call, um, I'm sorry civic center civic center mm-hmm. yeah and there was there was a few people upset about that but the, way but the, there, the, way the, the money wasn't it. there to fix the auditorium, and by that time, there was so it it was going to be so costly. Well, I think there was a lot of upset people just the way that it was handled. Of course, well, because the bond handled. was in two thousand and four, and nothing happened. Okay, nothing happened. So what's go- for six years? So what is going to happen to the civic center and the uh, I mean to the uh, auditorium and coliseum? That will be up to the citizens. Well, I think when the citizens, I have faith that when they see how much it's costing us, they're going to agree that it needs to go away. Well, at this point... I think that seems to be a pretty fair bet. At this point, it's going to cost millions to bring it up to code. To And, and by the way, the, the $8 million plus to bring it, the, just the auditorium, that the... Um, things that were going to be done to it, does not include any ADA. So that's going to have to be added on to it. So you're looking at millions for the Coliseum and Auditorium. Once you get to that point... But the question is, do we need it? Well, is it big enough? You still don't have any holding pins if you want to do dirt events. You still don't have any holding pins. You still don't have any practice pins. You still don't have any of that. So you still aren't going to get those events that need those facilities. Do we do we still need another dirt event center? Well, and co- the, the answer is yes. Well, yeah, because we do the ABC rodeo there, and that's. But then again, you can't you can't lose seven hundred thousand dollars or seven hundred thousand dollars a year. year. Just because the ABC Rodeo holds an event there once a year, no, and we, they could move to some outdoor arena. Let me say that everybody on the council has been very sensitive to that, and I think in past councils that's been the sensitivity of putting this on the ballot, because um, every council I've been on, this has been talked mm-hmm. about. But you've still got that ABC Rodeo that's very important to the Boys and Girls Club. Of this community, and that that has been very sensitive. Well, the city could give them a hundred thousand dollars a year, and be and be six hundred thousand well, dollars a year ahead. But it's it still needs there still needs to be an alternative, and that still needs and and what could although it, be? it is what being could talked about, be? we need to we need to figure out what we're going to do with the dirt event. They're everywhere now. I believe I believe dirt. everybody needs to come to the table yeah. on it. You know, um, all over the the state, there are county event centers, mm-hmm. and it, it's not just a city event center. What so, do you think will happen? I don't know. I, I really don't know. I do know there's talks going on right now. And it, it'll be interesting to see. But the first thing we have to do is see what the citizens want to do. Okay. That's the first step, is see what the citizens want to do. Uh, okay, you're talking about spending millions to upgrade it. Okay. Oh, yeah. And it would cost millions to tear it down. That's, that's what I'm wondering. How, what would it cost well, to tear it down? I don't know. We don't have to tear it down if we abandon it. We just give it to, to tech. That would be up to tech. And because I guess we have no way of knowing exactly what they want, whether they want it or what they would do with it. Tech wants it. I mean, tech want they need the land, of course. But, but they would tear it down. You think? My opinion, probably. It it would cost them less to tear it down and put something else in its place than it would than to fix it. Probably to fix it. Well, I mean, you got the Spirit Arena. That, yeah, I mean, you know, they wouldn't need it. Yeah, that's that's, that's what I'm thinking. Anyway, they have their own performing arts center. They've got the Spirit I just, Arena. I just don't. With all the facilities we have, and we're building the Buddy Holly um, Performing Arts Center, I just don't see that we have a great need for it. You know, I think a lot of it is sentimental. 
You know, we've it, I, it I graduated a, from there. It's very sentimental to me. Yeah, it is to me I too. Was, I graduated in there, and um, there's been concerts and rodeos all my life, and so yeah, it's been very sentimental to me. Seven twenty nine a.m. here on KFYO mornings. Dave King, uh, Matt Martin. We'll be back with Karen Gibson after this. News Talk 95.1 FM, 790 AM, KFYO Mornings, Dave King, Matt Martin. And with us this morning is Councilwoman Karen Gibson, uh, bringing us up to speed on what occurred last night at the uh, the City Council meeting. We have an email this morning, Karen, uh, not uh, a text message, I'm sorry, from the 790 prefix that says, can you tell us some of the uses of the Auditorium Coliseum that are occurring on a regular basis, those who would need to find another facility to hold their event? The only one I know of that do uh, on a regular basis, and I would have to get with Brooke to see what the reoccurring um, events are, but the only one that I know of on an, an actual yearly reoccurring is the rodeo. Yeah, um, but the, there's a lot. To, the uh, auditorium is used more frequently than the Coliseum, is it not? Yes, it is. But do we have uh, – do you have some figures on exactly how many uh, – how much it is used? I do. Um, The actual days, and we've got actual days from when, let's see, when Texas Tech had hockey, or I'm sorry, when when the first year that we had hockey was 73 days for the auditorium, and then from for the Coliseum was 250. And now that's actual days of use. So when we had hockey, it was used a lot. Yeah. That was the ice hockey. But then once the hockey left, it dropped down to f- the Coliseum being used 57 days a year. Yeah. Um, in 1617, there was 14 events at the Coliseum and 50 events at the auditorium. 14. I wonder if that's 14 days. Cause 14 the, events. Okay, so that's like the events. rodeo runs for three Five days. Or, is it five days? Mm-hmm. But that that's counts one as event? one event. One event, okay. Mm-hmm. The people have church in there. They have meetings in there. They have, um, there's several different things that happen in there. They had the throwback games in there. Each one of those was an event. Mm-hmm. Uh, another text messenger this morning from the 535 says, how much of the 700000 is fixed expenses and how much is variable cost? Well, it's all variable because you've got employees, um, maintenance, you've got um, electricity, utilities. All, it's all variable. No, okay. I don't know that any of it is actual fixed cost. Well, well, insurance I'm sure is is fixed. That would yeah. Well, I guess those would be, but that would be the only thing that would be fixed, I guess, because everything else would have to be a variable cost. Well, and, and I do want to bring up because <clears throat> I, I don't know if this is what some of the people are talking about, but the seven hundred thousand dollars is after all the money comes in from the events and everything. Yes. I mean, it's not, net. it's, it's, yeah, that's, that's after everything. It's 700,000 that they're losing per year, not before everything Correct. gets paid. Correct. So, okay, enough on that. Now let's get, <laughs> let's get down to the nitty gritty and let's find out what the scoop on LP and L far yeah, away. Sure. D- again, tell I us, told and, you. tell she, us where a third grader could I, understand I, what I you're talking about. I, I have a feeling she's going to, She's going to tell us what uh, what Jeff told us. Y'all don't have any numbers yet, do you? No, I didn't think not, so. Not hard numbers. Well, we have a $110 million number. That's for... for That's for yeah. us to go away from the power pole. That's us to go into ERCOT. That's the, that's the going away number, is it not? To, to leave, the cost of leaving? That's the, the cost of going into. Okay. But And we, we are going to... We're going to have a, a fee to leave, are we not? Yes, sir. <laughs> okay. But but that's, I mean, that one's still being negotiated. Great. If but it, it's, I will tell you, that's going very positively. So, uh, but the question that I think everybody really wants to know, what, what just to boil it down, is where will the funds be recouped? Is it going to be recouped through LP&L? Is it going to be recouped through the city? Um, it'll taxes? be LP and it'll be through LP&L. Okay. It'll be through, it has to come from LP&L. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and they'll have to adjust the rates accordingly. Yes. Okay, well. But, but I, I'll tell you how that, from what I understand, how that will work is it, it will be the fees, and the fees just won't come down as fast 
That's the way I understand it, depending on on what the SPS fee is Mm -hmm. for us to get out. Um, It just won't come down as fast as we had anticipated. So so they're not looking at raising anything for this? No. Okay. No. So the city... The LPNL can absorb $110 million over five years without raising fees? And then that's just part that, of it. I mean, there's, there's It's not like more. they're going to write a check. It's, they're not writing a check. It's, it's a very convoluted way that they do that. And you would have to get Andy to explain that. And he's tried to explain that several times to all of us. And it's a very convoluted way. But they, it's not like they write a check to them. Well, it's still one hundred and ten million dollars. Whether they write a check or whether the, it's through it's through wires costs and they do it. And I, it's it's five, it's uh, over a five year five year five period. year period. And then, and then there's there will be another cost that is in negotiation right now, and uh, you, you don't uh, you're not going to share that with us and what that cost because is. I don't know what that okay, is yet. There you go. That's the answer. So it, it it just, uh, like I said, I have read this story over two or three times, and it just makes your eyes glaze over. So there's just so many moving parts to it. And it, it makes me wonder, there are. how on earth is, uh, is this thing going to, how are we going to wind up benefiting from it with all the cost that's involved in just making the move? Well, part of lower... the way we're going to benefit is because once we get into ERCOT, we're going to be able to sell our power okay. into ERCOT. We've got to take a break, and we'll come back and talk more on the other side. News Talk 95.1 FM and 790 AM. We are KFYO Mornings. Dave King, Matt Martin, along with Karen Gibson. She's sitting in the hot seat right now. I'm always sitting in the hot seat. <laughs> I'm telling you, we have, okay. a, we have a lot of text messages no, this morning. Uh, one one wants to know why uh, the money that was allocated to the auditorium was not used for the auditorium upgrade. I asked that same question last night because I think... The bond, the bond election was in 2004, and I, I asked point blank last night, why was nothing done until 2010? Mm-hmm. There were no bids. There was nothing done until 2004. The answer I got was that, a, and it was a very 30,000-foot answer, but apparently the those councils wanted some debt to roll off so that they wouldn't have to to do the the tax increase that the citizens voted for they would not have to do that tax increase so they were waiting for some debt to roll off to do that bond that was the answer i got so consequently we waited and waited and waited and it just never happened right yeah okay a, a texture wants to know, uh, he said it's only uh, going to affect 70% of the city, so 30% of us are going to be left in limbo and gambling that our rates skyrocket to cover the cost of the decisions that they are not even informed enough to make in an educated manner. That's not fair, but your comment. So it, that won't, that won't, their, their rates won't escalate. They're not going to pay for that their rates will not pay for that are they going to stay with the power the the ones we have now the power company the 30 percent will stay with lpnl they have to stay on the spp power pool with sps and there's no way of knowing uh because from what uh jeff griffith councilman griffith said last time um the area it's all over Lubbock. The areas that'll have to stay on. There's no like Southwest Lubbock or Northeast Lubbock. No, it's just that's right. All over the map. That's uh, correct. Maybe your neighborhood or or maybe the one across the street. That's correct. And and you may be able to deregulate. That's correct. That's crazy. But it is. It, it is, is crazy. It but is. it is the way it is. Mm-hmm. And that contract was signed several years ago. So it's it's. That 30% contract is till 2054, mm-hmm. uh, 44, sorry, not 54, 44. So that 30% that are on SPS wires now will stay on SPS wires. Okay. So I'm going to ask a question. I don't know whether you can answer it or if, I mean, if there's a, even an answer to this. But if our contract is running out uh, in 2021, I guess for... 2019. 
2019. We for, have a bridge contact okay. contract till 2021. So 2019 with the bridge contract to 2021. Why do we have to pay the people we're leaving if our contract is up? <laughs> I've asked that question also <laughs> because I, I have said we don't belong to SPP. We are a customer of SPS. Right. But SPS is claiming that we are a, we're a large customer, obviously. Right. And so we will put um, burden on their lines then because they we're should coming have off another contract. and we're pulling our power off of theirs. Well, then they should have been prepared for the end of the contract or they should have had another contract added. Well, PUC doesn't see it that way. Oh. Okay. Well, as I suspected, this is a very difficult well, and it's very difficult to explain in three-minute segments. Well, I, I'm not so sure it's not very difficult to explain, period. It's, it's it just, is. There, well, it is. There's it, just there's so many moving it. parts to this thing. And, and I, I can tell you from what the text messages as we were getting this morning, uh, the citizens are seeing it kind of the same way I am, that the, it, it, there's a lot of questions to be asked about this. And there's a lot of things that just don't – It just from looking at the information we know now, it just does not appear that this thing – is going to be necessarily a good deal for Lubbock. However, what I hear you saying is, wait, give us some time for this thing to play out until, until we get some hard numbers and we know some more facts. You say that this is going to be a good deal for Lubbock. I believe it is. We've, we've been asked to, to deregulate over and over by and the over citizens? by the citizens of Lubbock. Deregulation I'm for. But this, this is how you deregulate. This is how... It gets done. So you either deregulate and go through the steps and to get it done, or you build your $750 million to a $1 billion power plant. So those, those are your choices. That, those are your choices. The citizens keep telling us we want, we want competition. We, want, we, want, we don't want the monopoly. These days, this is how competition is yeah. it's not like another company is just going to come in yeah karen we got to bring this okay. to is, quickly is there anything that you want to say before you leave regarding uh we want to give you an opportunity to speak your mind of something maybe some issues that you were concerned about no there's just a lot a lot going on in lubbock but lubbock is still a great city and and just hang on this ERCOT thing's going to work its work its way through there's just like like you said a lot of moving parts right now okay Karen, we uh, always uh, are glad when you come out. You always impart some good information for us and for our audience. Thanks so much. Uh, 7.53 a.m. We will take a quick break and be right back.